It's the time for mm, Pick It From China. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we are going to take a close look at something pretty damn weird I found on AliExpress. They call this the Nup Sup handheld game station. My biggest dream is to stay young forever. So I must say, like when you're looking at AliExpress, sometimes you find these weird handhelds popping up. This thing called the Nendi Lix. I have no idea how to pronounce it of the brand itself. There is nothing filled in. It seems to be like we're having different editions, like HD screen, IPS, 4x3, and the 5 inch edition. But which one this is, I have no idea. The only thing it says here, like the 5001 model. So I'm guessing this is the 5 inch edition. Micro SD support. It has support for all kinds of system, even up to PlayStation 1. We can listen to music, watch a pretty movie. We having have, what the hell, we're having like a recording, like a microphone built in and TV out functionality with an HDMI cable or HD cable. So that is the most interesting part about it. Is this thing actually any good? So let's take a close look at it in the inside. Okay, so they did a very nice job packing it up. It comes even with a nice screen wiping cloth. Then we're going to get, let's see, a very long micro USB cable. Oh, at least you're not using like the old school, the really old school version of the mini USB. So the handheld itself, the design is quite interesting, quite unique. As you can see over here, like the model it looks similar to one of these Pow Kitty devices. Yeah, the X15, if I recall it correctly. Here we're going to get the control for the volume, select start, ABHY. Only going to get one analog stick. Sadly, they put the D pad or the four buttons that need to be D pad over there. Shoulder buttons, four of them. And here we're going to get the CF card on and off. The output for the AV out. And then we're having, or at least a jack out. Let's put it that way. <laughs> you don't know for sure if this thing even supports AV out. Then we're going to get micro USB for charging a data transfer. And we're having an HDMI. And that is interesting because you don't see that very often with cheap devices. We're going to get two speakers or speaker holes. Don't know if there's a speaker in it, so we need to check it out. And I think finally they start, let's say, removing these crappy cameras. Okay, so inside, let's see for the final, the toilet paper manual, hand hand handheld game station instruction. Compre oh, no, wait, wait, wait. The comprehensive instruction. <laughs> Function introduction troubleshooting, like, okay. And able to download files. Serious noise. Okay, so... <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. No sound through the headphones, all kinds of things. So quick overview of the key instruction and that's it. But I just realized something. TV out with HD cable. Where is the cable? We're not getting any, including the adapter. Damn cheapos. Oh boy, so it's a little bit of a bummer in my opinion because the view angle is quite awful when it comes to this device. I've seen it before with cheap handhelds and yep, another one bites the dust. But let's talk about the menu itself. The menu looks kind of similar to the PlayStation Vita. For the people familiar here to my channel, yeah, I have reviewed many of these devices that come with exactly the same menu. And it's true, it's the same crappy menu. But if it's the software has been improved, the first thing I'm noticing, like so far I can see I cannot go to any external menus with the shortcuts that most of the time get broken after some time. No, you're going to get the game, video, music, picture, calculator, folder, the same stuff that we have seen before. Okay, so before we're going to start playing some games and just testing it so out, let, let's take a close look at this settings menu. Such a weird thing that you do press B. But over here we're going to get some changes that we can do, like advance. Let's check the information because I want to see what kind of version. And this is a little bit of a bummer. I have seen, let's say, a lot of different versions, but this is not like the latest edition. So that's just a fact. We can change the selection tune, stuff like that. TV out function. Here we're having the HDMI functionality that only there's something only this one with a couple of other versions have the support for. And the backlight is maximum like five. Backlight you can turn it on and off or something like that. And overall, there's not a lot of stuff you can change out. Okay, so this is the Sport, Super Famicom, Mega Drive, NES, MAME, GBA, Game Boy, Classic, and PlayStation 1. So what I find quite interesting that I want to try out is the PlayStation 1. Yeah, because most of the time these devices are not powerful enough to run PlayStation 1 in general. So I wouldn't be surprised that this has the same issue. Another interesting feature is over here, the Quick Load, Quick Save. But when you go into the settings, here we can change out the screen. 
but take consideration full screen is just using the widescreen. Original size has some different meanings, but with the Game Boy Advance you're going to get a very tiny screen. So in my opinion, scale, original size, it's a mix when it comes to express ratio. And overall, it's not very great, but just wanted to show you. So let's boot up some games and let's see what happens. Okay, so the audio itself is quite good. It goes very loud. But I can already tell you, this is not looking good. The audio is really slow. And for the first platform, it's just messed up. What the hell? Okay, I was thinking there was a big sound delay, but... Sound effects are all here, but it sounds completely messed up. Okay, another weird thing is like there is a lot of difference with the sound between the emulators. But the weird thing like with Super NES, they completely messed it up. But with the Mega Drive, it seems we're going to get quite a good emulation performance. It's not perfect, not it's a great test. Because I noticed with the first generation it didn't work at all. So somehow they managed to don't mess up the Mega Drive part or Genesis is known by the US watchers. And even the sound is not bad, but this is the loudest it goes, like, it's such a weird thing. All the sound effects are here. The sound is not like the original Genesis, but it's getting close. The analog stick is also very responsive, you can compare that with the and Nintendo 60 and Nintendo Switch, I mean. But like I said, like it completely must up when it comes to the arcade and Neo Geo part. So it's always the same stuff with these hand -like. It's, I mean, like. The reason is why I sometimes hate just these handles in general, like they don't improve it. Or they improve in certain platforms like Mega like Drive and they keep like messing it up with Neo Geo. Oh, I don't use the joystick. The D-pad is so awful. But some main games seem to be running just fine. At least good enough to enjoy. Stay down. Okay, so with Game Boy Advance, it's always the same issue. Like, sometimes the gameplay itself is playable, but you can hear with the sound, if you know with the Game Boy Advance and some games, you can hear like it's completely messed up. And in the last couple of years making these freaking videos, they're not really bothering like improving it. And you can see like this version, even has a minor sound delay. See, like it's it's just completely messed up. In my opinion, that ruins the fun. Like messed up music, messed up sound effects. All right, so let's do the PlayStation One test. They are claiming you can play it. I highly doubt it. I already see like it runs really choppy. I love the soundtrack. Mm, 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 mm. Let's go. Oh, oh, Tekken the slow edition. Yeah. So see, and this is what what they're like doing. Like, so you think to people they can play PlayStation One, but it's not the case. Of course, I'm doing so many of these freaking reviews. I almost can dream which handheld can play or can play because especially with these like weird Chinese firmware editions but the result is exactly the same like with two or three years ago the difference is like back in the day they didn't say that it couldn't run PlayStation 1 game you could boot it up but now they say you can play it but you can't play it because it runs like shit naughty but how about the HDMI functionality it works plug and play you need to go to the settings set it up 
but it seems to be working just fine. Take consideration it is a very low resolution output. It looks better than AV out of course, but still it's limited in some ways. It's a really great feature, it's finally that we're going to get the option for the cheap handhelds. Now better emulation, because with this it's a freaking joke if you ask me. Okay guys, so let's open it up. What we need to do is remove the four parts over here. I'm going to get myself some tools because we need to click it open, but because most of the part of the handheld is like clicked together. So that's the way how they go, but let's do a quick tear down for you guys and just do a quick peeking inside and how many speakers and how everything has been assembled. Okie dokie, so let's take a close look. Um, so when you're removing the screws itself, sometimes you're going to get already some openings here and there. I just noticed over here we're going to get an opening. So let's get my tool, let's open it up, let's be very gentle. And this one, is goes, yeah, this one goes quite easy. That's it, so that's the only thing that we need to do for opening it up. Alright, let's flip it open and let's take a close look at the inside. Her. The reason I hate sometimes these handhelds, like, because look at this, like, I know like the, the cheap, the, the cheap, cheap handhelds, but the thing that I really hate about it is that there is only one speaker in it. So maybe I'm like bitching about this, but look at this, like, the, the mold is over here, like, it's only like a matter of adding an extra speaker and do some extra soldering, because even the connection is possible here. So this is just well, more like a way that I don't understand, like, is it just such a big deal like to add a freaking extra speaker to this thing? So what I always found interesting with these teardowns, like all of these, let's say, cheap devices are made differently. To begin with, this thing had like one guy getting PCB. What I don't like about it, like the battery itself is soldered straight onto the main board. What I don't like is normally when some of these more expensive, like Embernic, have like a plug and play solution sometimes. But over here, like you can see, this thing comes, or especially this part of the PCB comes from 2020. So the joystick can be replaced if you want to, it's connected by a ribbon cable. And let's do a quick tear down, let's remove a couple of screws and just see what's beneath it. Alright, so the last screws have been disassembled, I'm going to leave the joystick in. Let's get this speaker out of the way. Oh, it's sticky everywhere! Okay, so let's lift it up, just see what is on this side. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I need to lift it up differently. I always say... But can be an issue it's like some of the connectors won't want to work with you. Oh crap. I think I need to remove this cable too. So we can just lift it up and just take a peek in the inside. Let's put it on the other side. Because I want to see what kind of stuff they are using. So on the top shell what you're going to get are the buttons are all loose of course. And they will be used in combination with a red Let's say transparent look-alike membrane. I must say that it's the first time that I've ever seen this color. Normally they like using the transparent edition. Okay, so I've already seen the joystick. They have some spacers between the LCD display and the main board itself. The main board. So it's quite interesting. So here we're going to get all of the clicky micro switches for all the other buttons like the volume control. Over here we're going to get the CPU that's the AT G2279 B. This is the chip that we did see many times before with these cheap handhelds. And they are using a Windbound chip over here in combination with a Hynix version over there. So the chips are some of them are quite familiar, but most of them lie low spec or just really cheap. They're the cheap cheap. And that's what you're going to get with most of these devices. Cheap 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 cheap. Alright guys, so what do you think of the Nupsop? Yeah, they did improve some things like the joystick is better, still horrible D-pad, HDMI functionality, so here and there they try to improve it, but the main core, the emulation part, it's like freaking awful. It's again a mixed bag, and in that part they didn't improve anything. So the fun fact, like when you're reviewing all of these handhelds over and over again, you can see like the minor differences, and the Nupsop... I think it's not worth it, like it's another device in a row of devices, like the cheap to the cheap cheap devices that are in my opinion not really worth it, simply because the emulation is very bad, and even if there are like some certain platforms playable, there are so many better options out there, that cost like a fraction more and you have better options. Well thank you for watching, consider subscribing, hit the little bell, become one of the Wicked family, and it will be great to see you in the next video.